So let's look at another approach to solving for these coefficients that doesn't necessarily involve solving a system. And of course, here it was a very simple system of equations, so there wasn't that much work involved in solving, and you probably could almost do that one in your head. Once you get to more complicated problem solving, that system is going to take a lot more effort, and so if you can find shortcuts, you're generally happy. So there are two approaches that you can take. Um, one is to realize that if we kind of compare here to here, right, denominators are the same. This is just a factored version of that. And so the numerators at this stage must be equal. Um, and of course, that's, that's the same as what we had over here. But the point is we want to kind of keep things in terms of A and B with these factors rather than trying to group in terms of, you know, powers of X, right, in terms of coefficients. So what we did here was we kind of compared polynomials, equated coefficients, we got our system, we solved. But instead what we can do is we can say, you know, that A times X plus 1 plus B times X minus 1 has to equal 1. And if we accept that this is an identity that needs to hold for all values of X, then we can say that if X is equal to 1, well, that gives me a times 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus b times 0 is equal to 1. And that means that a has to be a half. And if I plug in x equals minus 1, well, then I get a times 0 plus b times minus 2 is equal to 1. And that gives me b equals minus a half. All right, same answer, maybe slightly less effort in this case, right? I mean, well, in some sense it is less effort because not only do we not have to bother solving the system, but we also get to skip this step of kind of rewriting things, gathering terms, right? We don't have to do that step. We just stop here, we plug in appropriate values for x, and we solve, okay? Now, the other way you can do it and I, I kind of hinted at this in the a couple examples ago, you can actually work with this equation here. So we could say, you know, you have a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1 is equal to 1 over x minus 1 x plus 1. And so without even bothering to get a common denominator, what we can do is we multiply both sides. So if we multiply by, by x minus 1, okay, well then here we just get a, right, x minus 1 over x minus 1, they cancel, a plus b times x minus 1 over x plus 1 is equal to 1 over x plus 1, right? And again, this should be valid for all values of x, so we look for a convenient one to plug in, and x equals 1 sure is convenient. Um, and so if we put in x equals 1, well then that immediately gives me a plus 0 equals a half, right? And then you could similarly choose to multiply by x plus 1. And if we do that, we get a times x plus 1 over x minus 1 plus b is equal to 1 over x minus 1. And if we put x equal to minus 1, well, then that's 0, that's just b, and that's 1 over minus 2, so minus a half. Okay? So, I mean, this, this approach is, of course, very similar to this one. There's three possible methods here. You pick the one that works best for you. Bearing in mind that we haven't yet discussed what to do if you've got a repeated root or a quadratic factor, then you've got, you know, you've got to be a bit more careful. Um, but if you can factor completely in terms of, of distinct linear terms, these approaches will get you your coefficients right away.